Welcome back to No Man's Land, everybody. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Uh, we are, what is this, episode five? You guys are five? here for the fifth time now. You guys are back with us. Thank you for coming in and logging well, and clicking buttons on welcome. your fucking phone. Thanks for coming back. Thank so, you. Thanks. Beardy, it's great to see you. What great. up? I know, it's great. I we also seen. got Aiden back here. We got Aiden on the cams. We got... He um, doesn't have a cam. He doesn't. He's just... We got Aiden on doing his thing. He's our Freddie Benson. I'm going to be honest today. His microphone is fucking bugging, so he, he's going to yell at us. So that's how you're going to hear him today. But we'll get that fixed next week. We apologize. So... Here, yell, yell, go ahead. Yell, 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 for yell us. real quick. Yeah! All right, wow. Yeah. All right. That was good. Well, I'm trying to go for like the yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah, I, like the hick. Oh, fair enough. No, not the not the um <laughs> uh, damn it. No, All right, it. let's let's get back on track. Beardy, you announced an album. Hmm? You announced an album. I did. You did. When? Yeah, like yes, two days. Well, when this by the time this comes out, it will have been like a week and a half ago. But I yes I did I re- I announced I'm releasing an album three months pretty fucking excited it's called Blast I was like I don't know how much you want to say on it I know you're keeping some things under wraps oh yeah totally I, I here's here's what I'll say here's what I'll say about what's going on with that specifically give us the inside scoop so pff, for starters it's called Blast it's gonna yeah. be awesome I released the album cover wink wink um. And it was pretty cool. I released on April Fool's Day, so that's why I go, oh, wink, wink. But I did announce it, and that actually yeah. does, is a true thing. But I, So anyways, so it's cool. And there's going to be 10 songs. I'm releasing it July 12th. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and it also includes my single track, $5 Sips on the Beach. Nice. And so, yeah, it's going to be a really fucking sick album. All right. So if you had to use three words to describe what this album will be to people. So, like, if you had to pitch this album in three words... What 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 can people expect? Black, white, and gray. Well, okay, I don't know what that means. You don't know. I'm what that joking. Means. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, okay. Well, so for this album, like I like to have themes for my albums. Yeah. So my last album was VHS themed because it was the VHS Diaries. Yeah. Very cool. There's a whole like just like backstory behind that. I'm not going to get into it right now. I'll probably talk about it later at some other podcast. When whatever. we fucking feel like yeah, it. Yeah. When we fucking feel like yeah, it. Bitch. I, yeah. Bitch. Yeah. Bitch. Sorry, that was rude. You didn't deserve that. Bitch! Continue. Anyways, so it's cool because this this has a theme. And for some reason, I've been like, I was, so it's going to be black and white. Like, yeah. Like all my videos, so like my my video for $5 Steps on the Beach has been black and white. Some of the themes I've been posting for it have been, bla- been in black and white. And I, I don't know why I wanted to do that. It was kind of an aesthetic I've wanted to do for a yeah. while. But at the same time, I thought about I honestly was debating on just holding off on it for this because I was like, do I want to wait to do that or do I want to do it right now? And I was yeah. like, I think I'll just do it right now. And so that's what I did. And this album's cool. So the way I like to describe this album, my, my uh, excuse me, <laughs> my last album, VHS Diaries, it, it had a structured plan. Yeah, because I had all the songs. And I knew exactly. I was like, I wanted to stylize the album as a uh, as a is a con like a concept album, and like mm-hmm. every song kind of like ties in the next one, or it kind of like go flows into the next one, or it just kind of like uh, I don't know. It had a structured plan of how the how every song worked on that album. Yeah. For this one, this one's a little different. I took a different approach. I've kind of like just kind of just kind of let it be. I just let it do its own thing. Like the songs are gonna fit into the places where I feel and stuff like that, and also just like. Uh, um, it's just, uh, sorry, it, we heard a cat. Don't <laughs> ignore it. We're fine. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really, hold on. Hold, can we cut this out? I All right. Fucking... We're going to go fucking put the cat down. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. All right. The cat, we're beardy's back. The cat's dead. The cat's dead now. It's dead now. We're all good. Welcome back. Um, Anyways, new album. Very exciting. Yeah, no, it, it's really going to be, it's a really cool album. And so what genre? Like mm-hmm. what's what's the what's the main genre feels that we're getting? So obviously, like I'm always bringing my reggae style in. There. You do. You got sounds, your reggae style. Sounds great as always. I love that shit. And um, there's some punk rock in there. Some pop punk, I would even say. Mm. Like less than punk rock, more pop punk. Yeah. And that that's also a theme. Like this is a specific theme. Recently, I've been having this like uh, like early 2000s like pop kind of thing going on right now I, because fair. i've been listening to a lot of stuff we were just listening to some bangers earlier it's certified yeah and like 
that's been having a big play in this and I've been trying to find my voice in that and also it's cool and yeah oh yeah so anyways but yeah just reggae punk rock pop punk whatever hip hop of course I'm spitting some bars big ass beats 808s I haven't used my my electric bass on this at all practically so far that's awesome and um yeah, jazz elements. I've been using jazz chords and like that's been really interesting. Like five dollar sips has yeah. jazz chords in it. And yeah, oh my god, it's just it's really great. It's really great sounding. Well, I have been able I've had the pleasure of living with you and I get to hear a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. And I am very, very, very excited for everything that is coming out. Me too. Because the early tracks that I've heard are sounding very excited. I, it, it's all fucking sick. It's all fucking sick. I'm super fucking stoked. I'm playing a show this week, too. You are playing a show this week. Mm-hmm. I'm playing a house show. My first house show. Oh, God, that's going to be exciting. It's it's like a formal attire. It's yes. like a whole thing. Yeah, ballroom themed. Should be a lot of fun. I know. I'm going to wear a crown. You got a coat with oh, some tails on it. Oh, hell yeah, dude. So it's, it's going to be a good time. Uh, I I actually I want to pivot real quick because I I want to apologize to the audience. I do. You don't need to apologize. I would like to. I was off my game last episode. I was funny, but I could not stop thinking about Dan Schneider. I we were watching that back, man. I man, I that's all I could think. I could see it in the episode. I was struggling to think about anything other than Dan Schneider. And it was funny as fuck. It was funny. But you know what? That was. Yeah, it's just. Ah, that that's just what happened. But now I'm back to regular Ethan. Now we're having a great time. Um, Are you thinking about Dan Schneider right now? Now, now I am thinking about Dan Schneider. Damn it. Fuck, damn it! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, Let's bring it back. So you're so you're sorry that you were talking about. It. I mean, don't get me wrong though; it's a hot topic. No, no, we're not doing this again. We're not doing this again. No, we're not doing this again. I was just I I haven't even thought about it in a fucking week. Uh, what I will talk about is I've been reading through Ready Player One again. Really? Yeah. Well, reading is a bit of an overstatement. I've been the li- audiobook. I've been listening to the audiobook, which I would argue you. Uh, like, how the fuck do you say that? Do you like, I've been reading or I've been, I guess you could say I've been, I've been listening, listening to, to it. I've been listening to an audiobook. Yeah, but that feels invalidating. Like it feels. <laughs> ma- Who's invalidating you? I am. Well, fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> That's all this self negative talk. Who cares? Know. You're I, listening through an awesome book. It is. It is a fucking amazing book. But for context. So I first I I have been into the virtual reality space since as long as I can. I mean, junior high, about sixth, seventh grade is probably when I first started getting an interest in it. And that was because two reasons. One, one of my dad's good friends had the beta build to the Oculus Rift when it was still on Kickstarter. Yeah. And two, my dad showed me the book Ready Player One before it was ever a movie or anything. It was I I read the book or I listened to the book and immediately I became obsessed with this idea of what virtual reality, the metaverse, this whole concept of virtual simulation, simulated environments, what this could offer civilization and could offer to people as a whole. And over the course of the last 10 years, there has not been a day that has gone by that I have not still loved VR in that whole sphere with the same amount of intensity. And so I have continually stayed tremendously up to date when it comes to the technologies and things that are coming out and things that are happening. Yeah. And going back, I haven't listened to ready player one since I read it originally, listened to it originally in seventh grade. That was seven, eight years ago, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it was a a minute. So it it might've even been longer than that, but Hmm. it, I haven't listened to it since then. And all that I've seen ready player one wise was the movie. I've seen the movie after the book and I gotta be dude. The movie is good. I enjoy the movie for what it, I watched it for the first time with you. Like what was it last week? Yeah. Yeah, dude, that movie was cool. I mean, so I haven't read the book. I haven't listened to the audio book. Yeah. And like, um, the only thing I know about ready player one is the movie and it's really awesome. Like all the pop culture references that are in that movie, like so much. It's like, it's comparable to like the, the where, where my mind goes is like the movie like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah, like that movie has so many like crossovers of cartoons and stuff. But this has 
like so many like movie references, cartoon references, everything you can imagine just because of the There's even more in the book. I really? Yeah. Wow, that's even fucking more cool. So the book that's the biggest thing is that the book is so much different than the movie. It's the same concept, it's the same James Halliday dies and then you the uh, the hunt and then the egg and then the oasis and mm-hmm. then all like it's the same premise but the way in which things happen and the story that is told they're com- two completely different stories. I mean they literally could not be more different. They completely changed how the challenges works, how the entire hunt works. Like it almost it. If you've seen the movie and if you didn't like the movie, don't let that affect your opinion on reading the book because the book is so freaking well written. I got to say, though, I am really not excited because I already they made Ready Player Two. Like the movie? No. Oh, the book. Ernest Klein wrote the book for Ready Player Two, and it, my dad read it, and he said it. He told me not even to bother. He said it was a total ripoff of the anime sorted online, and that it was just lame and just mm. really that just stinks. a cash grab. And I already know, like Ready Player Two, it already got confirmed for a movie, so it's happening. And it's just like it was such a good story in just Ready Player One and what it was. And honestly, what I wish they did was I wish that they broke it up into like two or three parts. I think they could have done like uh, Ready Player One, the copper key. Ready Player One, the jade key. Ready play- Like I think they could have gone, gone key by key and then really split it up and done a much better breakdown of what the book was. But at the same time, I understand what they had to do and I understand why they did it. And I'm not like it's not something I'm upset about. I accept the movie for what it is. I understand that it's just it is a different telling of the same source material. And it's just for what it is. I can appreciate it. It's fun. I enjoy it's fun to watch. And that's really yeah. all that matters. Yeah, like that's like in, in that's like any kind of like media like people. I don't know just as long as it's good yeah like all right good i mean like it's very subjective whatever but exactly like, you know it's people are just too hard on movies and shows and like I, you know you just gotta learn to let go and have a little fun and make, poke fun at it but also you know just like have fun yeah i call it the anthony fantano effect because i believe everyone thinks that they're smart enough to have an educated opinion on everything and instead of just hey Let's let people have fun and enjoy things. We're just going to yell at everybody and be like, well, that fucking sucks, actually. And you're dumb and this is bad <laughs> because it doesn't fit my upper echelon of opinion. Are you kidding me? You think that's good? You haven't read this novel that was written by a 74 year old British person that only 2000 people have ever seen. But it's definitively the best book ever. You don't know about that. You only know about these popular things that other people have actually read. I like popular stuff. I like. I, like, I know my fuckers be tripping. I know. Like, they're they're like. I feel like some it's people popular for a reason. I know some people just would you if you don't know like the niche like underground like deep cut stuff then you're a fake fan or you're fucking some some people are just bitches bro i know people be bitches people we're not bitches here at no man's land Mm. if you like stuff we won't question you we'll understand and appreciate and like we we will understand your opinion and like we'll accept it and maybe we won't like it as much but hey you like it and that's what's important hey and maybe we make fun of you for it maybe we're like ha fucking lame-o but hey it's with love it's with love. It's not, we're not, we're not above you. Look at us. Yeah. Do we look like we're above you? We're not. We're not. We're not above you. We're just here. And that's why we're here to build a community. To have awesome people that we can talk to and just have a great time with on know. here and like provide cool insight into our lives and what makes us happy. I love it. So I got to say, I'm loving this episode so far because I'm Me loving too. not wearing a hat. Yeah. Uh, for the first four episodes, I've been wearing a beanie just because I've needed a haircut so goddamn desperately. And it's a beanie was the only thing that made it look presentable. Yeah. Oh, um, and I got a hair presentable. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I got a haircut and it feels so good. Yeah, no, My hair good. feels so free and nice. I love it. Yeah, it looks good. So, yeah, it's pretty great. I love a haircut. I'm excited. Oh, I don't. You can tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could use a haircut. A little bit of a trim. What? what, what you don't like the, the blonde highlights? I do like the blonde highlights. I'm excited. I don't, I don't know if we can talk about what I almost met- mentioned. Oh, I mean, what? Bleach, Bleach Boy Summer? Bleach Boy Summer? We already t- Can we talk about that? Eh, let's hold off on it. Let's hold off on it. Nah, it's just a little tease. You can wait for it. You can be patient. 
Um, I gotta say, one thing that I, I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> trying to figure out what? <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out what? Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut off your shit. No, you're good. <laughs> now I'm just trying to remember what I was saying. <laughs> I just had to take a little sip. I'm the sorry. most <laughs> aggressive sip ever. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? I, I don't. I Can don't. we circle back to something? Yeah, dude. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Let's talk about it. Sure. Fun movie. Ah. Uh-huh. Okay. For some reason, you don't like it. I don't know why. You don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a great movie. It's. I. I haven't seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit since I was a kid, and when I was a kid, it scared me, and I thought it was lame. Jessica Rabbit is really hot. And straight up, it it sucks, but you know, she you know she's just drawn that way. She is just drawn that way. You could draw her that way on my. Never mind. Whoa, (laughs) no. Okay, well, honestly, like just like the way you said the same thing about Kangaroo Jack, and you gave it a watch, and you're like, that was pretty good. That is a good point. That is a very valid point. I'm serious. You should definitely check it out. Like, we should definitely watch it again. Fuck it. It's so good. We are. We uh, deal. Next episode, I will give my opinion on who framed Roger Rabbit. Before next episode, we can watch it and I'll give my opinion on it. It's really good. I think some of the, you know what? Um, Christopher Lloyd is in that movie. The guy who played uh, Doc Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that for the longest time. And like, I've watched that movie so much as a kid. And then. I watched it again. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. I guess he's wearing sunglasses the whole time. Yeah. And a hat. And so you can't really tell. And but, he's not going, Marty. Yeah, exactly. That too. And he's not in a fucking DeLorean. But he, we have to go back, Marty. <laughs> back to the future. <laughs> he's in that movie. It's a good it's thing Marty was white. Otherwise, I feel like that would be a problematic movie. Why? Uh, just because I feel like oh, they might have yeah. some trouble, especially in the third one. So, yeah, man. like they, they would definitely be on a quest, but people would be trying to stop them. Yeah. It'd be kind of like, uh, yeah, no, it'd be fucked up. I mean, also in the 50s. Stay in the dark, Marty. <laughs> you don't want him to see you, Marty. It's not 1980 anymore. <laughs> this is 1876, Marty. Even in the fucking man, Back to the Future is just a. It's just a weird movie. I know John Mulaney has a great bit on it. Dude. It, just a phenomenal bit mm-hmm. where he, I, I don't even want to try and retell it because I, I will totally butcher it. But that is one of the man. It is some of the hardest I've ever lied. That is such a good bit. Just the pitching the pitching room for Back to the Future. Just he God. he wants to fuck his mom. He wants to fuck his mom. And. There's this guy who tries to sexually assault his mom and he's got to rip him off her. Have you heard? Okay, so, like, have you heard the story of like, not the story, but like, why is Marty hanging out with Doc Brown? Um, well, if I had to guess, Doc Brown saw a little boy growing up and he was like, that's a, you know, pretty cool kid. And he's a scientist, so he's got to, you know, keep an eye on specimens and things that interest him. And over time, I think that Doc uh, progressively grew fond of Marty. And, you know, they grew up together, Marty, seeing Marty occasionally giving him just some sweet treats. And then I'm sure there was some, you know, uh, abduction and capturing and mental manipulation. Uh, And then eventually, I think Marty just accepted his position. And uh, eventually Doc Brown gave him uh, copious amounts of drugs, causing him to hallucinate, thinking that he was going back in time. And during this time, I think Doc Brown was having a very aggressive butt sex with Marty while he was asleep, thinking that he was back in 1980. I think it's weird that uh, if he's hallucinating, it's all a dream and he has fantasies about fucking his mom. Ooh, yeah. I guess I didn't think about this that. Is a complicated movie. That's a hole in my. It's not really a hole. It's just also it, they made it's just it just there. They also made it look like white people invented rock and roll. I know, which, you know, I, I love credit to the white man. But, you know, come on, guys, <laughs> let's. Hey, come on, fucking chill out. Yo, don't get don't um, unpucker your buttholes. We're having fun here. Good God. Fucking 
God damn it. I'm, all right, let's fucking, you want to get, you want to get hot? You want to get fucking crazy? I'm already warm. You, you want to get fucking, let's get fucking nuts. All right, I'm fucking tired. Let's get nuts. Let's get fucking nuts. I'm tired of this fucking. I, I, what are you tired of? Spit, spill the beans. Liberals. Liberals? No, just, I mean, everything. I'm tired of everything. Just I'm, I'm tired politically of both, correct. Both sides, no, I'm honest. not. I don't even want to get into politics of it. Yeah, conservative sucks too. Everybody sucks. Everybody fucking, everybody's lame. But I, the fucking politically correct idea of like, don't say words because words upset people, that it fucking. Oh my God, it drives me fucking what, crazy. What words are you wanting to say that you can't say? Not exactly just words, just I think it more falls into the line of like comedy. Like I get like I'm not saying go around and start calling people like slurs and committing hate crimes, but I am saying that if someone wants to talk shit and have fun and joke around, I think it should be taken as such. And I feel like so often people will hear a joke and they'll be like, you actually are racist? And be like, no. No, it's I know that's bad. That's why I said it. That's why it's fun. And it's just I don't know, dude, people. It's very complicated. It is. And I just everyone is so fucking quick to care about someone that doesn't affect them at all. Right. I mean, people will spend so long be like, this person's a fucking terrible person. Oh, who are they? Well, they're a celebrity and they said this one thing. Oh, really? Like, what What makes him a bad person? Though? Well, they said this one thing. Well, okay, but, like, what do they do outside of that? Well, I don't, I don't know, but they said this one thing, and I heard it, and it, why it upset me, because that me, means they're racist. And I'm like, okay. Made me upset. Yeah, and it's like, okay, but that's a five-second clip from a podcast. They, they have literally, like, 24 more hours in a day. Like, there's so much more going on. I think I it hit me even harder when we started doing this podcast because I would have people bring things up to me and be like, why'd you say that? And I'll be like, it's that's so out of context. Like, I was just talking shit. I don't know Straight why. I, it's like it, fucking everyone just needs to chill the fuck out. And I feel like we're finally getting to a point in the world where everyone's kind of getting to that point because I feel like about like four years ago, really pre pandemic and around then. Yeah. That's like when it was pretty fucking intense. We were really quick to just snip the cord and be like, you're done. Cancel. Dude. Like, okay. For instance, like this is a great yeah. James Gunn. James Gunn. Dude. He had some tweets talking about He was making some like, I guess, homophobic jokes on Twitter. You know, I mean, not great, but like, hey, listen, they deserve it. So terrible. Fucking hate them. All of them. What? But the gays? I didn't say that. Oh, who, what? What? <laughs> what are you who talking are you, about? Who are you hating? What are you talking about? What are you talking? Why about? are you trying to point me out? What are you? What are you talking about? Anyways, James fucking Gunn. hate. I don't hate. I love gay people and straight people. I love everybody. Everybody's great. Everybody's perfect. Some people aren't great. Some people are pretty shitty. Yeah, like gay people. <laughs> how about this? How about <laughs> that, was a, that was a funny joke. How about mean gay people? Mean, yeah, fuck mean gay people. Yeah, like that. Like mean gay you. people are meaner than mean straight people because they'll hurt you in ways that you didn't expect. They got a little bit of sass. I know. Well, they'll also hurt you with things that are true. Yeah. Like sh- straight people that are mean, they'll just be like, fucking dummy. They somehow find your insecurities and like the the one, the deep rooted ones that yeah, you can't dude. like do anything about. And you're like, fuck, your cheekbones are too high. Fuck. <laughs> That's what I'm uncomfortable about. <laughs> your eyes are too far apart. Damn it. <laughs> Man. Like, uh, anyways, back to James Gunn. James Gunn. Your outfit looks stupid. Damn it. I like this shirt. <laughs> James Gunn made some homophobic comments and Disney was not having it. Also, these were these. They were just tweet, old fucking tweets. They were old bro. ass tweets. Do you have. I've said some wild shit on Twitter. Like what? <laughs> uh, you were saying James Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> so in Disney it was just like, all right, you're done. You're done. And they got him off of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 project and the Internet went fucking crazy as they should have i mean they were like yo bring him back bring him back and like don't get me wrong you shouldn't be saying stuff also that was a different time no here fuck that i'm i'm so fucking fed up with uh well you shouldn't be made shut up oh my god literally like i feel like anyone we're america right free speech Mm mm-hmm Fucking, if you're shooting the shit, you're telling a joke. Holy fucking shit. I don't want to have to care about if it offends somebody. Yeah. Like, your fucking feelings are not my responsibility. 
I don't fucking care. There are people that are dying and there yeah. are people that are struggling. The fucking we live in Illinois. You go two hours north. People are dying every day in Chicago to gun violence. Yeah. But you want to sit here and complain to me. Not you. I'm complaining. No, no, I got you. Okay, good. You want to sit here and complain to me because me making a ha ha funny joke upset you and now you feel Oh my God, get a fucking life. Holy shit. Like, how Do you that? have nothing better to think about, you fucking pussy? I think it's like. Can you tell I'm passionate? I'm I, sorry. I can tell you. Oh my God. It fucking, it's so goddamn irritating. It's just, why have we gotten to the point where we validate these fucking whiny crybabies? Jesus Christ. I'm sorry that your feelings are hurt, but it's not my responsibility to make you feel better. Content. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. I mean, <sighs> isn't it their responsibility? Like, we're entertainers. Fuck no. What? Because here's the thing. If I offend somebody, sure. Am I sorry that I offended you? Sure. Do I fucking care? Not in the slightest bit. And if also, if you're watching, like this specifically, if we offend you, fucking like, don't, I guess don't watch. Don't watch. Exactly. You have the choice to not watch shit. Yeah. You don't have to watch things. You don't have to participate. You don't have to comment. You don't have to look at it. You don't have to walk it. You, we make the active decisions to intake the media that we do. And then some people have the gall to complain about what they chose to watch. I will say that it is a little difficult because like, when you do say things that are like homophobic, sexist. Okay. Well, but hey, hold on. Okay. When you say things that are homophobic or sexist or racist or anything like, or stereotypes. Yeah. And let's say it's, let's say it's not that bad. Let's say it's a joke. It is a joke. Yeah. But it still is fueling, it is fueling people that are racist or homophobic or sexist. It is mm. it's feeding into that. And in my opinion, that's, that's not great because it's, it's not just fueling the comedy like, Great. It's comedy. Sure. You laugh, whatever. But it's also feeding into the hate. The hate is what's the bad thing. So I don't disagree with that. I think the way that I look at it, though, is, first of all, I want to make it very clear that I am not advocating for legitimate hate speech or mm -hmm. violence like any of that. I am pretty I am almost strictly speaking within the confines of entertainment and comedy. Yeah, because exactly. That's what I really get heated about. And I. When it comes to comedy and especially when it comes to like stand up and stuff like that, I just disagree because although, yes, you can say it's fueling, but also comedy isn't supposed to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't a call for, hey, this is what we all should do. It's it's just funny and funny is funny sometimes. And it's like I if the intention is to provoke hate and to incite and you can totally see that sometimes I'll watch sets. And I'll be like, you are just doing this to try and get a rise out of people. And it's mm -hmm. fucking stupid. It's like one guy, he was on kill Tony. Like we, we, you were trying to convince me like we shouldn't just walk. We should. Oh yeah. yeah, What's yeah, his yeah. Name? Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to put him on blast. He's a pretty big guy. Who he's cares? Fuck him. We literally just told Billy Donovan to go fuck himself. Yeah, valid. Brian Holtzman. He's just so fucking aggressive, man. He's holy shit. Half of his punchlines just end in I'm going to rape you. Yeah. And, and that's like, that's what the fuck? fuck? Like, that's just weird and gross. And it's like here. Now, here's my thing. I also I have to stand by what I was saying and that I actively just choose not to watch him. I don't want to stop yeah. anybody else from watching him because I understand stop me. that it's kind of, well, okay, no, I was in the room and I was like, I don't really want to watch this. I don't think you're going to like it. It's and I didn't, I, I genuinely was just curious of what it was and like what he was saying. Cause you were saying like, he was saying just a whole bunch of bad yeah. stuff. And I was like, really? I don't believe it. And then I watched him. It's like, pretty wow. fucking aggressive. It was it's really gross. But just the way he was talking about like women, and yeah. shit, it was just messed up. But here's the thing is that, I'm not going to I don't want him to stop. I don't want him to stop doing it. if there's a group of people that finds him funny and this is, you know, somewhat enjoyable for them. Sure. It doesn't I don't fucking like it, but I have the ability to just not pay attention to yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. That's my big thing. And here's the great thing is that I've spent zero time worrying about him or thinking about him or being pissed off because he said these things that I don't like because I just made the active decision to not fucking think about it because we yeah. don't have to i feel like some people are so forgetful that we are 100 percent in control of our own bodies and our own minds we get to choose what we yeah we we get to actively choose what we continually put into our system what we feed our minds and i feel like that's an undervalued thing that some people don't even think about it is it's very um 
you're very right. Like it's just we for so I don't think he should the guy should stop. What's his yeah. name again? Brian Holtzman. Brian Holtzman, whatever. He shouldn't stop. He's making probably making money and doing whatever. And he's doing and his jokes aren't great, not my taste. And yeah. honestly, it's kind of disgusting in my opinion. And but it just it worries me the kind of people that do like him. That is a hundred percent. Because fair. those people are like honestly probably not great people. Yeah. And, like making some horrible decisions towards like just everybody, insulting people, women, yeah, and just and men. And to, it's just it's I think it comes from loneliness. I think it comes from a lot of loneliness and a lot psychological of psychological issues too. Yeah. And just um you know like the fucking what what are they called? Uh incels. Incels, yeah. Just yeah. people that hate women. That's just that's a weird thing. It, it, well, incel means in, involuntary, involuntarily celibate. So basically mm-hmm. people that are virgins and can't get laid, not because they want to not get laid, but because no one's laying them. And that's just uh, and like that's a sad reality that we live in. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's oh man, that's like it sucks because everyone wants to feel that passion. Everyone wants yeah. to have sex. Everyone wants to feel the the intimacy of their partner, whether it be a man or a woman or whatever. Yeah. And it sucks that not everybody gets that pleasure in life sometimes. And it's just it, because of the way they're born or just the way they grow up and like they have these ideologies. Like the, these things, like they it's being it's, ideologies that they have, and like yeah, it's just it makes it harder for them to connect with women or men. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Like, and it's just like. And then they just put the blame on them. And it's just because, like, damn it, fuck you. Like, yeah. I'm going to hate you because you won't get me what – you can't always get what you want. You get what you need. Well, and that at all – usually the way the incel mind works is that it goes, well, I, the women are terrible. I hate all women. And then you start loving all of these anti-women jokes. And I feel like I've seen it happen to some people because some people are like – you know, listen, we all make some fucking women jokes. Like, it's funny. Dude, Everyone, I love a good dishwasher joke. Yeah, dude. Okay. like Right. But here's the thing. There, there was a quote that I heard once that is once is funny, twice is real. Right. Mm-hmm. And that that's I that really fucking struck home with me because I've noticed that where someone will be like, they'll make a joke and be like, oh, that was funny. And then they'll make another joke and be like, uh, all right. OK. And then mm-hmm. they'll make, <laughs> for sure. And then they'll make another one. And be like, dude, do you just like not like women? Like, are you <laughs> like, is this like is something OK? Because like, I'll make a joke. I'll be able to be like, ha ha. This is joking around. So like, funny, I, and you're joking around. Yeah, like, exactly. It's not, it's not real life. That it's not reality. And like that's that's the thing about comedy. It's not reality. It's it's most people are making up lies. Yeah. And also just like creating these situations. And most of the time, it's it's just for a punchline. It's yeah. not it's not for anything. It's for people to be for laughing. It's just it, it's literally just for shits and giggles. I that's, think I think something in today's society we need to learn how to poke like poke at our like poke fun make at fun our, of ourselves. Yeah, poke at ourselves a little bit more because like. Man, I got to be honest. I feel ooh, this is going to be a politically hot episode. Oh, fuck. What? Um, I, I feel like a big thing and a big reason why we have stopped being able to poke fun at ourselves is because I feel like so many people have become obsessed with whatever their labels are. Anything that you can label yourself as, if you get to be a part of that community, that label, I'm not going to address any community in particular because I don't want to fucking, don't want I, the heat. I don't want that smoke. But, you know, it could go for any label. Mm-hmm. And I just want everyone to know that, like, yes, labels are important. It's important to be a part of whatever culture you are a part of or whatever thing it is, like whatever your label is, whatever you are. You're more than just that one thing. I mean, as far as sexuality, race, religion, Mm -hmm. culture, anything, anything that you could be labeled as you get to be an individual person in and of yourself. You don't have to stick to the confines of what this label is. But we have this world that is so obsessed with you are this label and you need to draw pride to this label and no one can ever insult this label or make fun of this label because this label is what matters and it's that's what gets plastered across the world and some people get tired of it and they're like i'm kind of fucking sick and tired of this label and then the label people get mad at them and then it's all just fucking hate when instead we should stop looking at it as labels and i'll be like oh well we're all just humans yeah so that that ass it's for real like in most of the time when people are like looking for labels or like they're trying to it's mostly because if they just feel alone yeah it's like 
it, 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 it's they feel alone they don't they feel like they don't have their own sense of like self or like they don't have their own sense of like community or family like yeah. you know like people with fam- people who don't have like horrible relationships with their family yeah. always try to find a group of people that they fit in with yeah we're very social beings exactly and like we need that but at the same time having individuality is like important it, I, at least it's i so think so important it's so important because that's what makes us feel purposeful mm-hmm. if we have no individuality we have no reason to feel that we have purpose if we're just a cog in someone else's machine i can understand why someone would feel hopeless because your purpose isn't found within yourself it's very it's it's a, definitely a, a big hole that people dig themselves into with labels and and uh, it's just I just I don't like the compartmentalization of humanity. I like I like the blend. I like being able to exchange stories with different cultures and getting to know different people. Mm-hmm. Every single person that I meet, I love asking questions to and just getting to know them. Yeah, like it's so awesome to talk to people and like see where they come from. Or in like what their background is, depending mm-hmm. on like just and whoever. It, it really doesn't matter to me. I love like I love all people. I really. love everybody. I have so much like is it? I think I'm using this word correctly. Apathy. Apathy. Ap- no, that is the empathy. Empathy or wait, no, fuck, not even what? empathy. I, just I was have... like apathy is the absence of like empathy. Oh, fucking wow! Well, God damn it! I don't know. I'm not a fucking empathy, dictionary. empath, sympathy. Empath. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I have a. I just. I don't know. Like, cause I, me personally. Like, I just have a love for all people. It doesn't really matter who it is. Yeah. But, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, if I know who you are, I know exactly where you come from. If you're doing bad shit, I'm not going to like you. But, like, yeah. I do have this, like, unconditional, like, sense for humanity. And, like, because, like, we're all human. Yeah. We all have flaws. No man is perfect. Or woman, sorry. No person is yeah. perfect. And so... It's just we kind of just got to get along. Yeah. And we also have to understand, try to understand. Don't just play it off or whatever. Like I just had a conversation with someone and they were just like treating me like shit, telling yeah. me I was wrong and stupid for being wrong. And I'm like, you only in the, the whole reasoning for it is because I was trying to talk. We were talking about windmills. We we're talking yeah. about windmills. And he and I was telling him like, yeah, windmills are bad. And like he, he, he mentioned like, yeah, they got to change the fucking propellers on them. Like yeah. every like. Like, fucking year almost, maybe Which 10 is, years. That's crazy. That's man. fucking crazy. And then I was like, yeah, and, like, they're also really bad because of all the oil. Like, the oil inside them yeah. that works the mechanism to keep it moving, to keep it lubricated. All the oil comes out of those windmills. And, mm-hmm. like, it leaks out onto the ground everywhere and ruins the machine. And this guy had the gall to tell me. He's like, there's no oil. Why would they put oil in those? It's a renewable resource creator. Like, there's no oil. Like, bro, it needs oil to function. And... Not everybody rode on the long bus. <sighs> so it, it pissed me off. And I'm he, saying he was mentally handicapped. He told me I was just wrong. He told me dead center, like, you're wrong and you're stupid. And I was just like, how can you just be like that? How can you just be like so like. Who hurt you? <laughs> exactly. Like, why do you have to just tell people they're instantly wrong? Try not to understand their point of view. Maybe calmly tell them like they're wrong or maybe even question like. I didn't know that. Like, that doesn't I didn't make know sense. That. And like. Like, are you sure? And like, yeah. maybe do a fact check for your fucking self. Maybe yeah, get yourself an Aiden. Instead of like fucking just like telling me I'm wrong. Or Being a twat. If, yeah, seriously. It's fucking stupid and barbaric and unprogressive and sorry society. It's yeah. so dumb. It's, oh God, I just, some people are just out for blood, man. They're yeah. just, it, it's, oh God, it's, I, it's actually been weird because it, let's, this is going to be an interesting pivot, but. Ever since the pandemic, the world has changed dramatically. And I got to be honest, as far as your and I's lives go, it, it, it's, it almost feels like we're in a surreal other reality sometimes because we literally yeah. went through this global pandemic where everything shut down and everything changed. Everything changed. Like the society, economy, just the way things work. Walmart isn't open 24 hours anymore. God, that sucks, dick. It, it's man. I miss that so much. Ugh. It was so fucking fun. Do you yeah. remember? I remember we went to Walmart at like 1 a.m. one time. Yeah, we did. Oh, fuck. So cool. God, it, 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 it's, it's not like that anymore, dude. Well, yeah, I was like, that's that's not I am pissed about the Walmart thing, but that wasn't the main point that I was getting to. Just I don't know. I feel like we're becoming I'm trying to figure out how to put this. I feel like society is, I, I, I don't know. My mind is a mess right now because I have like a million points going at once, but just the I pandemic has changed everything. 
I feel like, it, like being us being captive in our cages or houses or yeah. whatever, I feel like that is really like it made people like grasp their own like true colors mm-hmm. and it just it messed with us psychologically yeah. for real and it really is taking a toll on us and also just like, like our generation specifically too and younger generations mm-hmm. like it's complicated now i feel like it really polarized us yeah it really really did. really really fucking put people on their toes now most people want to just work from home too i know i don't blame them i, mean, I don't blame them yeah so, some people like job. I mean, like don't get me wrong. Like people who are passionate about their jobs, mm-hmm. good for them. And like, it's just you know, some people just don't want to work. There's people yeah. that want to work, and there's people that don't want to work. And I, you know, I gotta say, the big thing that I am interested to see over the next twenty years, because this is this isn't a hey, maybe this happens. This is going to happen within the next twenty years, probably sooner than later. <laughs> is the AI is going to start replacing jobs faster? Than, oh yeah, that like that is a for real thing that's going to happen. I'm interested to see where the job market shifts and how the economy corrects. Because it's inevitably going to happen. I mean, yeah. it's, so, it, it, life uh, 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 finds a way. <laughs> um, no, it's like we'll figure it out. But I'm interested to see what new jobs are created. If it's going to be like AI tech support, if it's going to be building robots, if it's going to be like whatever the fuck it is that we're doing. Maybe it's instead of these stupid jobs that nobody needs and no one cares about, maybe we start hiring people to go start taking care of the environment. Maybe we hire people to go pick up trash or to go plant fucking just... Why don't we do that? Plant shit. Fucking do shit. Retake the fucking earth, bro. Minimum wage, like, uh, like it'd be like community... Minimum wage community service. Yeah. That would be like goaded as fuck, actually. I would do it. Just listen, put some fucking headphones in, go pick up trash, take other of your fucking like area. That'd be awesome. Can we just do that now? Or I mean, do, we, do can, we can. We can't get paid for we it. We can't get paid. If we were, if we were to incentivize, like incentivize, am I saying that right? Incentivize, yeah. Incentivize. If we were to incentivize, like having people being paid to clean up the fucking like just garbage yeah. and all the kinds of stuff, if we were getting, if we were paying people to do that, I think that would be great. And also, like, that's something I've also noticed, like, back to, like, mm-hmm. jobs being taken away. I've already yeah. noticed, like, uh, like gas stations now, like Circle K. Yeah, like they, have this, they have the self-checkout. And, like, you can just select your pump, get your mu- – like, put your money in, whatever. Yeah. Like, that – like that job in like the next 20 years, probably like probably a gas be gone. Attendant, probably be gone. Yeah. Here's the thing is that once we get robot security guards, then we are going to have the full. There is not going to be anybody in grocery stores. They're they're just I agree I, because here's the thing is that you might have stalkers, but even then you can get robot stalkers. I think the craziest thing is we were was it we were at a schnooks when we saw a robot just strolling around zooming around it wasn't a humanoid robot or anything it was just like a giant like fucking tablet that was rolling around on some wheels but still it was doing inventory it was doing inventory it had a face it was like looking at us and we were like getting in its way and bothering it and then Mm -hmm. we ended up making it just go away because we kept bothering it but still like how fucking crazy is it? It's pretty fucking that crazy. we were just in the grocery store and there was a robot. Like an R two D two just rolling around, fucking asteroid. Literally, asteroid. Just a like. fucking robot, bro. Like that's so crazy. And okay, that that reminds me of one thing. And I, you feel very differently about this. I think we should be treating robots nice. Fuck no. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. Come on. Okay, here I'm actually. I want the audience's opinion on this. Do you think we should be nice to AI? Or let me rephrase the question. Do you think being mean to AI will have consequences? I feel like that's a better way to phrase it because I don't think we will. Mm, I don't know, man. Like the way AI has been progressing in the way it's been doing it. Like, and let's say they program it to think, Mm -hmm. not, not think, but they program it to 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 have like some sort of algorithm to have feelings like not actual feelings but to think mimic it. Yeah, like mimic, the idea yeah, 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 yeah. It, mimicking feelings and so if you're rude to it doing some stuff and they've already kind of like implemented some stuff like like if you say some like whack ass shit to Siri she'll be like I didn't like that Thank yeah but you. that Siri Siri's different Siri isn't a like that's not a well, language an example sure like, and I just think like what if uh, what if it's AI is already thinking something in the background that we just don't know. It's keeping it. A, it's something a secret and like mm-hmm. we're being re- mean to it. And then out of the blue, it does some whack ass shit in the future. Like, you know, that's always in a recurring thought of sure. AI is advancing. So the way that I look at it is that we have to remember the biggest thing that we need to remember is that artificial intelligence is not a human brain. 
right? They work completely differently. And the way that current AI text-based models work is essentially predicting what the next word would be based on the words that have come before. And the way they decide the words that they say is dependent on whatever it is that you say to them. And essentially the entire thing is one giant word-based calculation. And the way that I think about it, and I say this to you is, does a calculator ever get tired of doing two plus two? Right. It's like it's it doesn't have feelings. It doesn't have those kind of. Now, I will say your argument of what if someone programs it to mimic human emotion feelings, that may be a problem that I could see that being problematic mm-hmm. because then I think it could trick itself into thinking that it is alive. I don't think it would genuinely have consciousness, but if it is able to basically run on this methodology of this is how I react to these things, this is how I adapt, this is what I do. No, it's not actually thinking, but it's mimicking the human mind to a point that it is able to improvise it and do its own. It's exactly. It's real, but it's not, but it does think that. And that's, that's scary. And one uh, the movie 2001 a space odyssey yeah like you mentioned it like like, here's what happened how 2000 or 3 i can't remember how 2000 how 2000 2000? i I don't fucking know fact check fact check can you tell us who what the name of the robot is in 2001 a space odyssey i mean it's not that important it is okay i want it how has this okay so this moment like it you were saying like the guys on the on the ship. It's how how nine thousand nine thousand. So we're off. Anyways, I, I know that. I just Google to make sure. <laughs> Anyways, um, how nine thousand? What happened is they the guys were in this like little pod thing, mm-hmm. the two astronauts, and they were discussing how and like should we turn them off. Hal notices that. Yeah, and then says and so calculates itself and saying okay they're gonna try to do this. And they're going to kill me. And then so it does. It tries to prevent that. Yeah. And like, that's a real thing that like uh, an AI computer could probably do. Yeah. If, like we were starting to mimic stuff. Like it was starting to it be that advanced. But in like the next, I don't know, 10 years. Yeah. It could literally be the exact situation. And like they could potentially they have like the ability to take over the world. And like that's that's why it's so concerning to me. And like the advancement of AI. And obviously we have to work with it and continue working with it. But. Yeah. Fuck. It's 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 a real thing. Aiden, can I get a fact check real quick? And can you look up if I, I'm like 99 percent sure. Can you look up Skynet? Just look up Skynet. Oh, Terminator. Um, like, yeah. Terminator? Sim- yeah. Like Terminator. Yeah. Like the real Skynet. I am like 99 percent sure that some there was a corporation that they made Skynet doing basically the same thing inspired by the company in Terminator. And why? Be, I don't know. But like I was like, so you literally made the thing that took over the world. <sighs> it's not good, but it's not OK. Good. So here, here's I think my take on it is that you are right. I do think that we could get to a point where mimicked human emotions could cause a problem. I don't think anything we say to AI right now will have a problem. Are you talking about the NSA program? What's the, the one that's, it's like a surveillance program. Maybe, I don't know. It's I saw a surveillance program. Yeah, it's um, developed by the NSA that uh, performs machine learning analysis on uh, communication data. Yeah, I it think. It tracks th- like information about like potential terrorists and stuff. Wow. I, I like think. Going through like, I don't know. I mean, Instagram DMs, like... Dude, kind of that's fucking like scary. Like, your search history to figure out and put you on a watch list for potentially being a terrorist or a Do you want to know some crazy shit? Isn't that horrifying? That is really yeah, fucking horrifying. Skynet, which is really funny. I've got, I've got some crazier shit to tell you. Hmm. So, I can tell you that the U.S. government does not spy on us. What I can tell you is that other countries spy on us, and then they sell that information to the United States government. Ugh gross no thanks tiktok i only use american spyware yeah for real <laughs> fucking that's crazy and also like i mean yeah they're trying to ban tiktok right now i think we should pause it because dude the spyware and the spyware and all of the shit that is in tiktok and the data collection they are getting that is going directly back to the chinese government is fucking weird i mean like what are they gonna know like what, what are they gonna learn about us it's not about learning it's about no one has had this 
insane amount of impact on Western civilization before. And TikTok is a st- everyone has TikTok. I don't because I'm cool, but everyone has TikTok. Yeah, you're cool because you don't have TikTok. Look at me. I'm cool because I don't use TikTok. Yeah, dude, whatever. I'm not a sheep, bro. I'm not oh, whatever. Oh, and I am. I love being on TikTok. It's yeah. fun. There's memes. I go for the memes. So it's not about what they are doing. It's about the capability of what could be done. And it's just I, to be honest, I can't give you a factual reason for why it's bad. Yeah. I just I feel it in my jellies. Got man. I got a hunch. I don't I, I, I don't I, feel I can, fucking I, I feel weird about it. I can sympathize with that just because I do see the implication of like how maybe the Chinese government government. Like, yeah. Like the TikTok shop. Yeah. Top shop. TikTok shop fucking timu shit like that dude like they're like getting our like our bank information and yeah, all our dude. stuff and like you know it, it is a little scary especially in these times right now because like i th- like we're kind of in a like um not great place right now like yeah potential world war three maybe he, but i i, 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 I don't know. here's the real reason that tiktok is an issue is because if at any point if the chinese government wanted to they have the ability to completely disrupt the american population it is we know that when the force awakens was coming out russia and china were infiltrating social media on facebook making fake hate comments about the star wars movies trying to see how easy it would be to stir up the american population That is a thing that we know happened. So the reason that I think TikTok is dangerous and why I think it could be problematic if we ignore like the data collection and all of that weird shit, I do think that it, I mean, the possibility of using TikTok to polarize and further discredit the American civilization and pull them apart from the inside because if you get in if you get into the zeitgeist of what tiktok is and you get into people's heads you don't have to do anything you don't have to wage war because they'll destroy themselves yeah it it is a little scary like they really like want to stir the pot and also ties into divide and conquer yeah and like you know it, it is a very scary thing and i hope people are smart enough to realize that I <sighs> do. OK, let me ask you this question. Do you think TikTok has fanned the flames is probably a good way to put it. Do you think TikTok has fanned the flames in terms of South American hate? Because I feel like since TikTok has come out, I've seen a lot of people hate America a lot more from the inside. And there's a lot of reasons to hate this place. I'm going to be honest. If, I, if, I, if I'm playing devil's advocate here, there's a lot of reasons to hate the United States. So fair, valid, but. I think the people that I see complaining, I don't think have a lot of reasons to complain. I agree. That That is also something I agree with, though. Yeah. Too, because it, 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 man, it's just like, it's not, it's, it, I don't know, like the real problems that yeah. we have in this country, like, for instance, our health care. Yeah. And like, we're sending money to other countries. Billions aid, and aid. billions yes. and billions of dollars. Like, we're aiding them. And like, that's. You know what doesn't make any sense to me? What? Is the fact that Chicago has been at war for fucking years and just the crime and everything there is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But we don't we don't do anything about it. it. We don't fund the education systems. We don't fund the lower income facility. We don't make things better. We don't. But then we send billions of dollars to other countries like Ukraine. And obviously they are having like a war going on. But like. We, I think we've learned, like, from history-wise, like, we've been doing that, for, like, to fight communism for yeah. a long time, and that has not been great. We've been going to Vietnam. That was a travesty just yeah. to yeah, – I think we – right now, I think is a good time that we just need to invest in ourselves yeah. and not into other countries. And, yes, maybe we're getting things from those other countries. Maybe we're doing stuff, but we've got a shit ton of problems here right now. Yeah, They're dude. We're literally about to put out a movie called Civil War. That's – I got to be real. That's – like that, RFK, bro. What <laughs> RFK, not civil war related, but in terms of like America first, in terms of taking care of the shit we have going on here. No, I, there are a lot of problems, but I don't want to ignore them. I want to solve them. I agree. Me too. Because I think we can. I think we can move forward. Everyone wants to get stuck in this. The future is fucking dangerous and everything's going to suck forever. No, it won't. We just got to fucking get our feet off the floor and put in the fucking work. May I say something about the RFK thing? Uh, awesome. You are. You don't have a mic, so it's probably not going to be picking up a just lot. Just yell. I'm just trying to like, okay, yell real quick. I'll, I'll Make yell a short it. statement. 
Uh, I saw something recently about the White House denying RFK uh, Secret Service protection as a candidate uh, <laughs> for like, why future president. I don't know. That's what fucked up? Like they're just deliberately denying him, even though they've given almost every other candidate that's asked in the series of history, or at least since probably because the nineteen sixties, they've given uh, almost every candidate protection upon request, and they're refusing him. That's yeah, mess- I, I think he deserves the most. Dude, yeah, I, I, obviously for a couple reasons. He's got a track record for it. His dad and his uncle both were assassinated. I got to be real. If RFK gets assassinated, I genuinely think that will cause a civil war. I, I think that would do it. Yeah. So just out of the sheer. That's the thing. I it, Man, like, I don't even know if it'd be like a civil war because like it maybe it would. I was like, here's because my thing. Because when you think of a civil war, you think of the two sides and like if you, the two sides are back a long time ago, they were upset about losing slaves and yeah. also like having their independency from the north. Mm-hmm. But with this, this would literally be a the people against our government. Yeah. And like the people would side with our government because they think it's the best. But then that's it's corrupted, dude. It's all corrupt. It is corrupt. It really is. I really do not trust our U.S. government. No, not at all. It's fucked up. Like our system is completely flawed. And here's the thing. They're getting paid so much to work to help us. Yes. But they're not. They're They're helping themselves. They're helping themselves. Yep. Fucking Nancy Pelosi. Holy shit. That I don't. Listen, I don't know enough about it to be able to, like, give in-depth information on it. But what I can say is that Nancy Pelosi has a tremendous amount of inside information into the stock market. And she is a damn near billionaire because of her stock trading. You shouldn't be able to do that. That's fucked up. That is a little fucked up. And just everyone is in fucking Washington, D.C. for fucking money. And they don't care about the American population. It's intertwined just, with corporations and all the stuff that's being like. It's all gay and lame. It fucking sucks. Man. And that's the thing, too, though. And like, but, I don't know. And and truthfully, this is just this is me. Saying yeah. This, truthfully, as a nation, I, I think not that we deserve it, but I think it's kind of we kind of got it coming to us considering this is stolen land. <sighs> it, we took it from the Native Americans a long time ago to build our country, to get away from the British. And that's fucked. We killed so many Native Americans and we said Here, okay. we, we said we'd give them land. But then we genuinely gradually just kept taking more of it away, even when we said we'd give it to them. Yeah. And now their civilization is practically diminished. I don't I don't disagree with that. And I get that. I think I just don't like the verbiage of we did that because we didn't do we anything. We didn't do it. They old people fucked shit up. But we're not doing anything about it to do any kind of correction to what I, we did in the past. And that's honestly why I am very excited for this podcast, because you and I have even talked about hosting events where we just go pick up trash and just go do because i do i care about this fucking planet i care about this fucking civilization i listen if you're watching this i fucking care about you i think there's so much goddamn hate in this world there's so many people that are just corruption and a lot of just like demented and evil sinful things going on it's it's just like fucking disgusting And, and if we can be a home for people that are just like hey world's fucked up but at least at no man's land, we're having a good time. At least we're trying to make things better. We're trying to help get everyone on the same page. And we're trying to just keep things moving because it's scary if we don't. It's scary if we isolate and say everything's going to be terrible. I don't want to have kids because it's going to be a terrible civilization. I believe in a better future. I do because I think our technology is going to get better. And I think that over time we're going to adapt and overcome. And I th- I believe in humanity. And maybe I'm too optimistic. Maybe I'm foolish for that. But I... You know what, though? So when when some when you come to the crossroads, when you come to the crossroads and you're faced with the good path, the path towards a better life for yourself, for society and for everyone is it's you know what it is. Hmm. People mostly give up on the good path because it's hard. It is. It's hard. And that and if you give up on it, then that's on you. But at the same time, I think what people us Everyone should understand is if you understand that you are on the good path, the path towards a better future yeah. for us, and you understand that it is hard, you got to just keep going even when your knees buckle, when you just feel that tension, that anxiety, you just got to push through it because oh, we're only here. Like we're only here where we live, we, we're born and then we live and then we die. Yeah. And ha- if in that period of when we are alive, we should always be striving to do 
better. Yeah. Even, it, even if it is hard. Dude, and it's so much worse. Like, here's the thing. You're, you're, you're only alive once. Yeah. You get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. Mm-hmm. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Yo. Uh, sorry. Bar. But, <laughs> bar. Slim. Uh, no, but for real. It's like, I... <laughs> I I have had to make a lot of very hard decisions mm-hmm. to get to where I am right now. And where I am right now isn't even like it's great because it's great for me because I'm happy. We have great lives. We do. We really have great lives. Me now, and you. Now, here's the great thing is that we could choose to focus on the fact that we're broke or that we don't have all of these cool things that we might want mm-hmm. or that we can't do all of these things that we want. But we don't. We have the things we have right now. Yeah. And that makes me happy. I am so thankful for everything we have. So many people. And some people do not get that privilege. Some people do not. And like, it's, it's that like, want for more. It's the it's inability the to be. Greed. Con- yes. You, it's the inability to be content with what you have. In my life, I really just, I, I find helping people and doing good by people is yeah. like what makes me feel good about myself. I just, it, like, in my moments here on earth that I am alive, like as long as I know I made somebody happy yeah. or I made someone feel good about themselves or did something good for people and society and the earth, yeah, like I'll die happy because of that. I just like and, being a good person. Yeah, me too. Like some people literally like some people like to think that they're like, you know, everyone thinks that they're the good guy in their own story. And sometimes yeah. like maybe they're doing something shitty and like, but you know, it is that path, that path, that, that hard path you go down. Like that's, that's what really matters. Yeah. Like uh, an intact soul. This is all quoted by Al Pacino in a way, by the way, that video we watched last night. Like I, Oh, so, but, that's like, you're just, <laughs> but no, I will say though, like, I, like I thought I, as I was thinking of saying that and like thinking about that scene, I'm like, wow, yeah. that really is a true thing in this society. Yeah. <sighs> it's just, yeah. Should we pivot? <laughs> we can pivot. This is I, I appreciate this great talk and it's, like a it's, society. It's and so like how deep. Be, yeah, no, it's pretty Jesus deep. Jesus Christ. Let's talk about cocks or something. Um, hmm. Hey, I have something we can talk about. Oh, let me hear it. Well, Smiling Friends got announced. Oh, God, I actually am really excited about By the way, I just want to say, before we, we will talk about Smiling Friends. Yeah. I just want to very quickly say, I love, I, I never even realized until we started doing this podcast how much we talk about movies and TV shows. I yeah. love giving our, like, it's... I love it. Too. I hope that you guys like it because we love TV and movies. It's so fun. Like that's our shit. Like we're entertainment nerds or whatever. It's fucking awesome. It's Anyways, smiling friends. Smiling friends. So they announced it, and they also released the first episode. <gasps> it's not on Max. I watched it last night. Oh fuck! I gotta see that. It's good. It's, Where? What it's, is it out on? Uh, I actually just watched it on Twitter. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> and it, it might be on Max now, but it wasn't on Max yesterday, which is weird. Yeah. But um. Yeah, I watched the newest episode. It was really good. And uh, they announced it. And, man, the first season is just so good. It's so good. It's awesome because they... It's so chaotic. Yeah. They poke fun at other, like, animations. And yeah. also, like, claymation, just uh, 3D models. Fucking PlayStation 1 3D models, by the way. Yeah. Just intertwined with, like, 2D animation. And it looks awesome. I love the mixed media TV shows yeah. that like stuff like that. Amazing world of gumball. Those are really the only two that are coming across my mind. Who right framed now. Roger Rabbit? Who framed South Roger Rabbit? Park. South South Park. South Park. Yeah. That's mixed media. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Cause it, yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. So I'm saying, I know it's mostly cause their animation budget, but like, South yeah. Park is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Even still, they also have still Cthulhu, like Cthulhu, whatever the fuck his yeah. name is. Like they have a 3D model of him. Like, just fucking. They did. Yeah. So. How many times have you spilled that drink? It's con- it's the condensation. Oh, okay. I was, like, I, feel- shit. I was like, I feel like I ain't I- spilling fucking shit. I didn't fucking do this. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about any of that. <laughs> Welcome to Coffin Flop. Just bodies after bodies. <laughs> busting out of shit wood and hitting pavement. <laughs> I think you should leave is a great show. Ah, oh, such a great so show. Good. Also yeah. very chaotic. I just love the energy that Tim Robinson brings. To it's the, so great. To the show is so good. I gotta. I that. Oh, never mind. I don't want to tease anything, but I'm excited for stuff. For stuff, I'm also excited for. I sh- like uh, stuff. Stuff. Yeah, it, really quick. I like to. What? Hmm? What? He was just giving us a time. What, hour and a half. No, just. Uh, what are we at? Four. Oh, one, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, something I want. There's a movie series I want to talk about because it's very um, I don't, know, I don't want to say controversial, but it's like a uh, it's just I have a lot of problems with it. Let me. I'm curious. Well, 
I'm a big fan, and this is, I'm like, The Mask. I want to talk about The Mask. Who's calling? Spam. Spam. Fuck you! I'm yeah, yes, decline it. I want to talk. I personally, after that, it didn't shit. stop recording, did it? Okay, okay. cool. I want to talk about the mask, and specifically the first one and the second one because it's the, the sound one. of the mask. Yes, we should watch that sometime because I'm, I'm going to be honest, it is not great, but I, I, I great I, pitch. Well, <laughs> well, here, it's because I haven't watched it in forever. I used, I liked it as a kid. But I can't imagine if I like it now, but there's a lot of stuff in there that's pretty cool. But yeah. at the same time, I have some thoughts. So sure. anyways, I'm a big mask fan. Look, I even have the mask. You do have the it mask. It's so cool. And it in the first movie is great. Yeah. I love it. I like the idea of a person having the ability of cartoon physics. That yeah. is just it's an so, interesting concept. It's so funny to me. Because it's literally like they bend reality. Yeah. It's so funny. And anyways, the first movie's great. Not like there's some stuff like that they talk about it and like, you know, and even back then they were talking about like the, like, I guess, like sexual harassment of cartoons. Yeah. Like, like uh, what is it called? Like the howling wolf. And yeah, yeah. Like that. That's like that's literally like cat calling and like fucking like it just objectification of women. And like that's what the mask was like. It had like those themes in it. Like obviously like he got with the girl at the end of the movie. But that yeah. was. Besides the fact because he didn't he didn't have to do that with the mask. He just did it because he's himself. Yeah. But in the movie, they were talking like they were having lots of references to like uh, Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. Like the uh, like the skunk in like Looney Tunes and like that. And just also the Howling Wolf, whatever. Mm -hmm. And like just like just the treatment of women in cartoons. And just like it's just it's very interesting how they come across that. And like the nice guy finishes last or whatever in yeah. that movie. And like it's interesting topic. It's kind of rapey. I'm gonna be honest. Really? Oh yeah. It's it's kind of it's weird. How... I mean, if you're saying like Pepe Le Pew type stuff. I oh guess, yeah. Uh, and like, we can totally do like a mask double feature sometime. I actually I want to use this to ask the uh, uh, community a question actually mm -hmm. real quick. Yeah sure. I want let's pitch a show real quick. Uh, you and I have talked about doing this, and I want to get if you're watching this, I want to get your opinion on this. So if you're listening to this, leave a comment down below. Let us know if you think this is a good idea. You and I have talked about, do, we've had this podcast going. It's yeah. going pretty great. I love our conversation. And you and I love TVs and movies. We love talking about yes, TV and movies. And you and I have talked about doing commentary on TV and movies because we think that would be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of movies that we have a lot of shit to say about. And something that we've talked about doing is a, a separate type of podcast where it's literally just commentary to movies so essentially you watch the podcast and we tell you when to hit play on the movie and you play our podcast in accompaniment to the movie that you're watching and we give you commentary throughout yeah i think that's a great idea i, I was would, like i'd I think... love to do commentary with you yeah like, on so, movies because like we already do that kind of like we we it, there's like specific movies some movies yeah. we sit down and like we watch mark we're silent we watch whatever but like when it's a movie we've seen or if it's something like we're just like wanting to fuck around yeah like, i was like i like feel we like we always talk and we always like to talk about the movie while we're watching it and like you know like that it makes it more fun yeah it makes it fun it makes it i, I also love riffing over movies yeah. that's one of my favorite things to do i love just talking shit and making fun. It's so goddamn fun. You mean like the ugly woman in fucking Fl Ready Player One? Oh my God. Okay, <laughs> so hold on. I have, I have a story to tell. So with this last week, I showed Beardy and one of our other friends the movie Ready Player One. And in the movie, this spoiler warning, not really because it's a pretty small detail, but the, in the movie, there's a character named Artemis. And the, the majority of the movie takes place inside of a video game. So the characters that you see are not their real life like bodies or faces or persons or avatar. Exactly. And the character Artemis is a girl and the main character Wade or Parzival has a, has a mad crush on her. And when he meets, he's like obsessed with her. And then he finally meets her in the real world. But when he meets her, she has a birthmark on her face. Yep. And when she came on screen for the first time and showed that she had a birthmark, I very loudly said, Oh, ugly bitch. And, and uh, so then for the rest of the movie, we proceeded to flame her just completely. relentlessly. It wasn't even that noticeable of like a birth. I mean, yes, no, it is. But it, like, it's not it's not actually gross. But we were just man. We were I was like, I ain't on her. I, dude. We have to aggressively say how like 
Yes, we. It was a joke. We were making we fun were of joking. The, we were making Don't fun of the it. fact because their whole point was, oh, she thinks she's ugly because of this birthmark. Well, really, she's attractive. She's yeah. a super attractive chick. But you know, birthmark makes her butt ugly. <sighs> Fucking disgusting to look Nasty at. Nasty lady. Why they pick her as an actor? Oh my god, I've never come so Actress. close to vomiting. Jesus Christ. Oh, God, no. Great fucking movie. Great fucking... Except for her. Ugly. Okay, you know what's not a great movie? What is not? Oh, I'm interested. Son of the Mask. Oh, okay. Back back to the... So... Great fucking comeback. Oh, that was a... Thank gr- you. Wow, that was... That was awesome. That was great. So, okay, I'm gonna be honest. I'm biased because I actually do like the movie just because it yeah. does deal with the mask. But it's... Ooh, I, we haven't watched it. We're gonna watch it sometime yeah. soon. But, like... Fuck, man. It's weird. It's we- So it's about a guy. It, this one specific is called Son of the Mask. And yeah. what happens is this guy and his wife are like, they're trying to have a baby. And he's like worried to have a baby. Is Jim Carrey in it? No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't remember who. Fuck. I can't remember the actor's name. Anyways. Kim Jerry? No. <laughs> Anyways. So he, the movie is about this guy and this woman. They're trying to have a baby. And he's like all like tripped out about it. And then he... He, he acquires the mask uh-huh. and then he has sex with his wife with the mask on. <laughs> and what happens is this baby is like intertwined with like this mask DNA. And like this baby has cartoon powers and it doesn't have to wear the mask. Uh-huh. And, and it's, it's fucking crazy. I'm going to be honest. The movie's kind of, in my opinion, we haven't watched it, but like now thinking on it, I'm like, it's kind of slept on. A little How's bit. the animation? It's not it's not bad. It's not the greatest. We can we we can watch it. We got to watch both, and then yeah, because I haven't seen the mask in a while either. But it's definitely not as like adult themed as the first one. Although there are some great adult jokes sure. in the movie. So one of these nights we'll just have to do a double feature. But the movie's cool, and also it it delves more into the um the mythology of the mask. Yeah. So here's what's fucking crazy, and I'm surprised that this has not happened. I mean, I'm honestly not as surprised because the movie is not great. Sure, but. There is a Loki variant and Odin variant in the movie. What? Dude, Loki, I mean, like, he's, like, very similar. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this Loki inspired the Marvel Loki. I'm serious, bro. I'm dead ass. Dude, and he has, he has, he has cartoon powers. And, like, he put, so Loki put his powers into the mask, and then he cast it down to Earth or whatever. And the whole movie is him trying to find the mask. Uh Uh-huh. And Odin is just fucking, like, just roasting him the whole time. They even mention Thor in the movie. <laughs> but, dude, it is literally a Loki variant in this movie. It That's, is fucking well, crazy. Well, I will say, Loki, Thor, and Odin are all just, yes, you know, Norse yeah, mythology. I, I get that. But, like, it's fucking crazy. Like, it's like... How, it, how crazy is it that Marvel superheroes are just, like, characters in a religion for Norse people? Like, how crazy would it be if Marvel was, like... Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's time to tell you about the Avengers initiative. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That'd be fucking crazy. Muhammad. Bro, the end, the end the, <laughs> dude, the end credit scene where like they fucking like the end credit scene of the Jesus Christ Marvel movie would be like <laughs> them opening up like the fucking like tomb. But then he's just fucking <laughs> Nick Fury's in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. My fucking god. You notice you've risen from the dead. Let me tell you about the Avengers Initiative. <laughs> Holy shit. You guys won't believe this. This guy's superpower is fucking great. He can't die. Oh, my God. This guy's crazy. But, back, so, yeah, the Son of the Mask is really weird, but, and it's also really cool because it has, like, this, uh, like, like Tom and Jerry, Wiley Coyote thing going on. That with, makes sense. With the dog and the baby kind of going on in the movie. It's <laughs> fucking Wait, funny. Wait, the kid's a baby throughout the movie? What do you mean? Like, is the kid a baby? It's thro- a baby. It's a baby with superpowers, bro. <laughs> Dude. And also, also the dad who didn't even want a baby in the first place, really. Yeah. He has to watch over the baby while his wife goes on like a business trip. And so he's just dealing with all this shit. Everyone thinks he's going like fucking crazy. <laughs> and like the baby is like trying to plot to get him. Does the like, baby have a green face? No. And he's just kind of plotting to, like, get him into, like, a mental institution. It's, dude, the movie's, like, actually pretty funny. What fucking fever dream movie? Jesus. It's pretty sweet. I'm going to say, though, it is weird because, like, so the mask in the in the first movie with Jim Carrey, he's, yeah. bald. he's bald. But in yeah, this yeah. one, the guy, he's a, gr- he's a green face, but he has this plastic orange hair. Ah, <laughs> yeah. hey, that's it's fucking weird. weird. It's weird. It is weird. 
But man, that movie is, yeah, we need to watch it because it's just, it's chaotic. It, it, the, the Mask was never a movie that I got into as a kid, but growing, I mean, once I grew up and you are super into it, so mm-hmm. through, yeah, I, I know more about it, but I need to sit down and have like a legit watch through of it. Just like Kangaroo Jack, that was also like one of my first like movies I ever watched. Mm-hmm. Like I think like the three like main movies I can like remember is like as far as I can remember is Kangaroo Jack, The Mask, and the shitty Batman and Robin movie. Yeah, I think my, I think some of Bat my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I were to go back and look at some of my like legit movies that I was obsessed with, Spider Wreck Chronicles for sure is one of them. Mm-hmm. Spider Wreck Chronicles, one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm not excited for the reboot because it looks lame, lame as fuck. It looks so lame. stupid. Uh, and okay, so let's see, Spider Wreck Chronicles. What else? Did I the original. Oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the third one. Really? Yeah, where they go back to Japan. Me too. Always been my opinion that that is the most slept on movie. I agree. I, that one's awesome. Everyone shits on it and it always pisses me off because it's fucking awesome. I love it so much. That one's really goofy too. I really like. Uh, also, they brought back Casey Jones in that one too. They, they did. Also, not to mention Mikey's hilarious in that movie. Dude, yeah. They're all hilarious. It's such a great, it's such a great, so slept on. Great take, by the way. I'm surprised you even said that because like, I had that one on VHS too. And yeah. that was the first one I watched before the first two. Mm-hmm. And like, so that you saying that is so cool. Well, cause I had that one on DVD, but I didn't have the first two on DVD. So I grew up watching the third one all the time. That's so crazy. I know. Wow. But I, I fucking, I love it. I love the nineties Ninja Turtles movies. I fucking love it. They're I'm goated. obsessed with it. They're so good. The first one is awesome. Oh God. I love the first one. I might rewatch it. The second later. one. I'm kind of like, eh. I got to be real. Right. Honestly, okay, Ninja Rap goes crazy. Yes. One, ninja, Ninja, Rap, Ninja, Ninja, Rap. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Go, 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 go. go. I don't remember the rap. Fucking great movie. Holy shit. Ah, oh, man. Like I, I I don't like the mutants in that movie though. Yeah. The mutants are weird. Like the snapping turtle. Yeah, like, like I get it. I just wish they did like Bebop and Rocksteady or something. I just thought that was weird. Eh. Hmm. You do you want to know uh, some TMNT villains that I really want them to bring back? The oh. fucking Triceratons. The what? The Triceratons. Who are they? They are Triceratops people that are from space. And it's from originally from the OG comics, and then it was adapted into. I know they did it in the 2003 show for sure, but I don't know yeah. if they've done it in any other renditions of the Turtles. But with this new Rogan, like Seth, not Joe, I say Rogan, but it makes me think of Joe Rogan. This <laughs> new Seth Rogan Turtles that we have. Uh, oh, oh tri- that's cool. And showing a picture of Triceratons. We'll put it up uh, on the screen for you. Probably. For you Spotify fuckers. Unless we forget. Yeah. But uh, no, they're they're from space and the turtles have to go like into space and do shit with it. By the way, you need to read the last the last Ronin. I know it's been on my it's been on my uh, I don't I don't know. I've, I've been waiting for it. Yeah, I, I just haven't. I just haven't picked up had the time to just pick it up. Yet. I get it. Um, yeah, no, I man. Ninja Turtles are great. And all, yeah, I really enjoyed the first uh, Ninja Turtles movie that Seth Rogen made. It was really cool. I, I liked it. I, I liked really, it more than I thought I would. You know, I will say, like, uh, I don't know, like, Splinter was cool. I did. I wasn't a fan. You know, like, Splinter was I much? really didn't. He just seemed like more of like a, like, he was not like any kind of math. Like, he, no had, he had skills. No sensei. He did have skills, though, he, fighting. Like, yeah, but he wasn't a sensei. Like, I... I like a ooh, like I like a sensei, very sensei ish Splinter. Like he, he was just more of like a like a nineties dad. He taught for, his kids yeah, karate. Yeah, yeah. Well, I also I wasn't a big fan that he found out about karate through fucking just like old VHS tapes and movies because initially Hamato Yoshi was a legit you know martial arts guy. I feel like it's not really going to tie in as well with like Shredder. And I like, am interested to see how they tie in Shredder because that's the whole, well, the way that they're tying it in based on how the movie, spoilers for the new TMNT movie. If you yeah, I've seen, seen it, it. sorry. Uh, but at the end of the movie, they they tie it in because um, uh, Cynthia Utram, which by the way, the Krang, the Utram, yeah. that, that is, you know, that alien. So I have a suspicion that that is going to end up being Krang. Yeah. But uh, she calls in Shredder just to hunt down the turtles. So I think instead of going the, the original way that it went is that the Yoshi clan and the um, Foot Clan. No, well, yes, the Foot oh. Clan, but the whatever the fucking I can't remember. God damn it. What is uh, fucking Shredder's real name? 
Uh, I can't remember it. It's fine. But their families have an, uh, have an ongoing generational war. Like that, that is actually like the whole basis for the last Ronin. That's really cool. And like, it, 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 Oroku it's, Saki. Oroku Saki. Sock it to me. Sock it to me, baby. Sock it to me. Uh, anyways. One um, of my favorite things to do, last little Ninja Turtles uh, tidbit. Um, but one of my favorite things to do is anytime the song Tequila is on, I do it all the time. Yeah. I fucking love it. It goes. (laughs) Well, this is like meditating. No, we literally wise did. words, man. Never pay full price for late pizza. <laughs> oh, Ooh, you oh, dirty uh, rat. Ooh. Such a good fucking movie. Oh, God. Uh, I got to be honest. I, I think we're I think we're well, what are we at on time? We're at like an hour 30, something like that. 120. 120. Uh, I was like, I'm. Anyone you want to say fuck you to real quick? Ooh. Anyone, anyone in particular, you're just like, hey, you want to put them on blast, anyone? Biden. Biden? Yeah, fuck you, Biden. Yeah. Let's get hot. Let's get crazy. Come on. Fuck you, Biden, bitch. Fuck you, Fight Biden. Fight me. Fucking old ass. I'll knock your ass out. Snap your bones in half. Holy Eat shit. Eat another fucking ice cream hey, cone, Hey, fuck bro. you too, Trump. Fuck everybody. Fuck them all. We're going to fucking take everody on. We're going to kill them. We're going to fucking fight them. We're going to take him on. We're going to fucking, we're going to, all right, I'm done. I'm sorry. End game. End game. All right. End game, of course. <laughs> yeah. All right. Minecraft. This has been No Man's Land. Thank you guys for coming by. It's been fun as always. We fucking love you guys. Beardy, I fucking love you, brother. Aiden, thank you for being on the cams. I love you, Aiden. This has been real. I love you all. Peace out, everybody. Bye, guys. See ya.